Um, okay, so um, I feel like I'm just bragging about my own event, but when I was researching on these ladies, I was just so amazed and inspired. And you guys are in for a treat. So before we get started, now, um, oh, there will be a Q&A after that. So as and when you are listening to the discussion, you have a question, just start thinking about it. Okay, so let's do a quick round of introductions. Hi, I'm Audrey. Um, I was a practicing lawyer and I turned into a full-time software engineer. So I taught myself uh, programming two years ago and I've been working professionally for close to two years. So um, yeah, I'll share more about my experience later on. Hi, I'm Olivia. Um, so I founded Sakura Sky. Um, which is a software and technology company. I've been in tech for about 15 or so years, even though I don't count when I was a bit younger. <laughs> um, so this is really fantastic to see so many people turning out uh, in this size of women in technology. I think I've done technology events in a number of different continents and it's really impressive to see how many women are here. Uh, hi, my name is Nitya. I'm originally from India and I did a uh, bachelor's in computer science and I've been in this industry for the last five years. Uh, I've been working in different countries and continents through these five years and seen the scene of women in technology across and I really believe that this is an amazing field. Everybody should come, bo come on board and enjoy the benefits. So. I work with Facebook, I'm a partner engineer in Facebook and we basically work with different partners and uh, help millions of developers, uh, so software developers out there to build rich and engaging apps using the Facebook platform. So uh, basically we work with any anything that you see like log in with Facebook, play with Facebook, uh, share on Facebook or any uh, integration that you have with your apps like Candy Crush, you see what what your friend is playing or which level he's playing. We basically work with developers out there to help them integrate with Facebook. So facing all of the developers and helping them uh, build with us is something that I do day to day. So really passionate about this technology and industry. Okay, so Olivia had to leave a nice, so let me ask you your question first. Sure. Yeah. So, um, so your company is amazing. You, for well, Facebook has like what two percent female engineers. Mm. Sakura Sky has what sixty percent female engineers. Probably a little bit more now. Wow. So um, when we first started, uh, we didn't have that many engineers um, that were female. Uh, it was mainly a male-dominated kind of business. Um, but we put our heads together with, um, I don't know if anyone here is uh, familiar with Malcolm Trednick from the open source community. He uh, worked for me for many years in a previous role and he was always a great supporter of women in tech and yeah, we uh, started to target to get more women uh, involved and not just women but uh, quite a diversity of different types of people. So we're very outcome driven in what we do in our business so we don't really care who you are, where you come from, in fact we prefer it. Um, you know, we give people around the world ticket after they've worked for us for a year so that they can learn different experiences around the world. And uh, because of that flexibility, we've ended up with a lot of women as well. Mm -hmm. So women with children, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah. So flexibility is a secret to diversity? Uh, I'm not too sure. It kind of snowballed. So we started off with a few women and then, you know, more women would apply uh, because they saw other women in it. Um, and yeah, so I guess that's, <laughs> that's how it's happened. So awesome. So I want to ask the next question to Audrey. So when you talk about a you know, woman engineer, I know Nitya is uh, from school. She has a CS degree, but Audrey, you are like what? She she went from lawyer in Singapore to software engineer in Silicon Valley, which is like the mecca of tech industry in two years. So big fan for now. <laughs> for now. No, not not for now. Like like before I ask the question now. So. Tell us about like your learning journey. Like, how was it like? Was it tough to look for the language to learn? Um, yeah, it was. Um, so the whole journey is is definitely not a walk in the park. Um, it's very tough. Um, I started because I I wasn't interested in practicing law and I wanted to look for something else to do. And I, I looked up uh, programming and uh, I started out with JavaScript uh, front end programming. And um, it seemed it seemed interested uh, to me, and, and that kept me going on. And um, 
Um, and and I, I did hit a brick wall when I was deciding which back end language to learn. Um, so I was choosing between languages like Ruby, Python, uh, Node.js. Uh, before I, I, I decided to pick up a language called Go. Um, and, and that just kept me going. I mean, the, the more I built stuff and the more I practiced uh, programming, I found that I really liked it. Uh, so that keeps me going. Um, and I mean, um, for somebody with no CS degree, I think uh, it's a lot tougher because you have to teach yourself and to pick up things uh, yourself. Uh, and back then, when I was learning, um, there wasn't a program like this. Uh, there wasn't a program like Tech Ladies. Um, that, that had this mentorship program, uh, which was what I was looking for at that point in time. So a lot of the learning was, was just done by myself, online, with whatever materials that I've got. But I do, I do think that I would have benefited a lot if uh, I had like, a mentorship program like this. Um, so so it's, it's tough. You'll get rejections. Uh, you'll face some rejections. You'll face people. Uh, telling you that that you you know like being skeptical um, of the fact that you don't have a CS degree, uh, you have to prove yourself, uh, especially in Silicon Valley where where people have like have like really strong CS fundamentals, uh, and people with like 10, 20 years of programming experience. So um, a lot of I mean a, a lot of the, the journey is about learning and um, proving yourself, and just. Yeah, just being very self, very being very self, uh, what do you call it, self motivated. Yeah, I want to explore that topic a little bit more. So, um, apart from facing rejection, without <coughs> you, what are the biggest challenges you had while you were learning how to code? Um, biggest challenges. Um, I think um, maybe it was one of the challenges was um, looking for mentorship. So uh, I think mentorship is really important, and it's it's difficult to find a mentor who truly understands, who and who truly has the patience to to guide you along. Uh, I think that's very rare in, in in the industry, at least from my experience, because I mean because some, sometimes people who are experienced are are so good, uh, and, and they assume like they, they assume a lot of concepts uh, that 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 you may know, but. You know, um, they've been in this industry for so long that they've forgotten what it, it was like to be a beginner. So um, finding a mentorship is one thing. Um, another thing was, it was just really like facing like facing skepticism from from people, people people looking at you, wondering if you know um, if, if you're up to uh, up to the task as other people who have like um, a lot more experience than you do. Um, but I think you get over it by like building and shipping stuff and proving that, that you can build like equally um, good products. Um, yeah. Okay. Also, so the next question I'll probably ex expand it out to the whole panel. So for Olivia, your perspective as a hirer, Nitya, your perspective as uh, someone who works in a team, and also Audrey without a CS degree. So do you think that CS degree, having a CS degree, really matters in getting a software engineer job? Pass it to you first. At the first thought, like me saying it, like, yeah, I have a CS degree, but if I say, no, you don't require, it would sound a bit lame, but I'm just taking an example. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm taking an example of my fiance. Um, he doesn't have a CS degree. He's pretty much pretty, uh, basically from the same background as me, but he's really successful and way higher in the career ladder than me. It was just that he, um, he studied electronics and then he was like, I don't think this is what resonates with me. What resonates with me was solving hard problems. Like you, pretty much the same, like Excel sheet throughout the day, there should be a better way to do things. And if, if the better way is what, and he really enjoyed, so I think this is the crux, he really enjoyed solving the problem and it didn't feel like work to him. Like when he, he was one of my mentors, and when he mentors me, it doesn't feel like work to him, but it feels like work to me. Like, oh, hey, come on, let's take a break. I'm like, no, we are not working. We are enjoying. We are solving problems. <laughs> yeah. So I, I would say, like, uh, looking at him, I think there's practically no advantage that I have or disadvantage that he has in the whole scenario. You, you, you think you are creative. This industry is for you. You think you want flexible job. This industry is for you. You think you can think of 
groundbreaking solutions, this industry is for you. Nothing is going to, going to be stop, stopping you from you know entering here and being a successful startup or not next Zuckerberg, if you can say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I totally agree with you on that. Um, I think you know there's some things that you can learn, which are skills. I mean, software, learning software, learning to code are very much skill based. Um, and if you're creative, it comes even easier because it's all about problem solving. You know, if you come from a design background, I think it's much easier to move into the problem solving that's around it, which sounds a little bit, uh, you know, um, against the norm. But uh, some of the most creative people I know are very, very good programmers. And in fact, the majority of people that work for us either do art or they do music, um, is what is the most popular thing um, that people do or just travel, <laughs> which is also a good thing. But, um, you know, if you've got the right attitude, you can always learn the skills. And not all uh, software engineers that are really good software engineers have got a CS degree uh, for a number of different reasons. And on industry certifications and specialisations are always extremely important to be able to take you to the next level. In saying that, obviously, uh, if you can indulge in something that you're learning to be able to achieve, then, you know, that's something that, you know, you look for. But, you know, we wouldn't reject someone just because they don't have a CS degree. Right. Um, so I add to that. Um, so I, I think that CS fundamentals are still very important uh, in software programming. Um, but one thing that I've discovered along the way is that even without a CS degree or a CS education, you can still teach yourself CS. I mean, you can still... It, the materials are out there for you to learn uh, by yourself. Um, and one interesting thing that I've noticed is that um, if you come with a fresh mind, you 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 are approaching a problem with with a fresh mind and and from like a, from like a, a unique set of perspectives that's your own and that's not like that's not sort of like affected by um, by uh, a formal education. So you bring with you um, so you bring with you fresh perspectives when you tackle a problem and. And you can turn that into a strength if you want. Okay, so we'll talk about, you know, why it's okay you don't have a CS degree as long as you have CS fundamentals. So I want to, so basically like Nita or Coding Wizard, you know like what Java, PHP, HTML5, is there anything you don't know? Um, <laughs> and Sakura Sky does a lot of different kind of technologies. And, um, you know, Andrea, you started with uh, Python, Ruby, eventually ended up with Go. So could you share with beginners, like beginners in the audience, how do you pick what to learn? Like out of the, the mess of all the different languages, how do you, how, where do you even start? Um, okay, I think maybe my answer might be a bit different from the rest of the audience and even like the task that is there for the uh, tech ladies. But uh, to me, uh, programming language was never a barrier as in like the fundamentals are always the fundamentals across all the languages and I think the different languages came up for the reason of each language trying to solve a different problem so it's basically same fundamentals different problems are to be solved so different languages came up the way uh, and for example uh, for recruitment in terms of like Facebook Google and other kind of tech companies language is never a barrier you can like practically code and solve a problem in any language that you're comfortable in and that's how I, I, I came here but in terms of starting to learn a language uh, I started with front end because Again, like they say, I, I was an artist and I was really creative and I'm a very visual person. So backend was not something that was really attracting and pulling me versus seeing something on the screen and me making a site, making things there was the most attractive thing. And that's where that's how I started with frontend. And even with frontend, even with HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, you can cover pretty much the entire computer's fundamentals. So it, would, it, it should be basically you picking a... What, what, what is the most important problem you like to solve? And then using that to really break through all the fundamentals and computer science and understanding it. And it could be Ruby, it could be PHP, it could be anything. Oh, then, do you want to take this? Side yeah, sure. Your... No worries. Yeah, okay, that's easier. Yeah. Um, I actually taught myself to program when I was about 15, 16. Um, and was working for a radio station at the time on the media front. And uh, the web guy went away on holidays. 
And so I took over his duties because I really wanted to style it a certain way. <laughs> and much like yourself, I actually was studying at art college and have um, you know, uh, some qualifications in fine arts. So I think you know, if you're a visual person and you want to see something very immediate, um, you know, it makes a lot of sense to be doing something um, that is you know, web tech or something that has a front end or Objective C or Swift or something along those lines. Because um, you can see very rapidly what, what you're doing and create something and feel like you've got uh, what you're creating. Um, if you're more interested in something a little bit more analytical, um, you know, Python uh, is, is great, although you can kind of get lost in your own web. So, you know, Ruby is a great team sport. Um, we find that with our teams, a lot of, um, we can have a lot more people working on the same thing. Um, I know that other people will argue with that, <laughs> and there's more purist thoughts and many a political and uh, religious argument. But um, really go with something that makes sense to you, do it, get some results, see something visual, and feel like you've achieved something because there's no one way to do it. Whilst there's uh, <laughs> protocols to learn to do it, um, there's, there's no one way. So I think the biggest barrier, especially for women when they're learning it because they don't see many of their peers doing it, is that they don't think what they've done is right. Um, and you're usually right. It's just really hard to get to the result, so you've just got to persevere. Okay, so a short pause on this uh, panel discussion for a while. I'll leave to go before she, because she has a call <laughs> at nine. So give a round of applause to Olivia. She's amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rachel. Okay, Audrey, why go? Right. Um, so... To answer the question, I think you should, I think you should just go with whatever language that you like. Is that fine? <laughs> go with whatever language? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, people will come and tell you that, oh, you should learn this, and you should learn that, but ultimately, um, if you like language, you're more motivated to carry on with it. Um, so just, just check out the different languages, uh, try them out. And if you like them, just, just go with that. But having said that, um, if you're surrounded by a community of a certain language, uh, people can guide you for that language, for example, Ruby, then it might be easier for you to just go with um, language where there's a strong community because it's a lot quicker to get feedback and, uh, and answers. Uh, and as to why I chose Go, um, I think I just liked it. I mean, I, I looked at Python, Ruby, and then, and then I looked at Go, and Go just seemed to me like a really nice language. You, you can't explain it. You just you just like the way it looks. You you like some of the, the philosophies and the concepts behind it, um, and yeah. So I went with it, and, and I really did like it. Awesome. So when it comes to learning new languages, what are some of the common? Um, oh, thank you. What are some of the common um, misconceptions that you see from coming from women, or it could be coming from men? Like, is is programming all about math? Uh, that's what I always hear. Okay, I'll be really honest. Uh, I do think it's about math. <laughs> However, having said that, uh, I've read that uh, even the creator of Rails thinks that it's about nothing to do with math. He thinks that, um, I think he thinks that it's, it's language. Like, if you're good at languages, um, you can program because programming is an expressive thing. Um, but for me, when, when I'm programming, I'm, I'm looking at it from like a mathematical point of view. And I mean, I love math. And, and when, I, when I got to programming, it was like, this, this really, this is so in line with my mathematical like, sensibility. So, um, so I, I would say that it's a math thing. But I mean, but whether it's women or men, I think it doesn't matter. Like, um, yeah, I mean, women can, can love math too, and women can love programming too. So, um, it, you know, if you just try it out, you, you, you might find that like, you like it. You know, just go ahead with it. Um, I I have a slightly different opinion, maybe because I think we code on different stuff. Like when I do front end or when we develop websites, it's not essentially always maths. Um, so some of the mi misconceptions that I hear is like programming is really difficult even to get started with, and that CS degree is like a groundbreaking thing that I can never get over, and it's it's a really stressful job, and it's not for women. Uh, and um, like uh, in the sense that women have an inherent um, like disadvantage but trust me this is I think it can never get as flexible as it gets for us I would believe like you just need a computer sit in front of the computer when you want to 
could be 2 a.m. It could be like 12 p.m. It doesn't matter. And most of, I think uh, she would agree that most of our industries focus on impact in the terms of what you build. Like what is the product? They don't really see whether you are doing it 9 to 5 or whether you came in like 5 minutes later or how hard you worked. All of those actually don't matter. So I think there's, there's like no issues in terms of degree. There's no issues in terms of like you being good in math at some point of your time in in your school or that uh, it, it's really hard I don't I, it's it's again just to me it's just problem solving so what your uh, what your brain does naturally you just tell the computer do this so that's that's basically like programming for me so for example one of the uh, algorithms that we learn in uh, CS degrees shortest path algorithm where you say point A to B, what is the shortest path? Your brain can exactly tell, walk this way, this is the shortest path. And that's practically what we tell the program to do. Like, okay, if these are the various options, tell me the shortest path. So I think that that's how I would recommend you look at this whole uh, scenario, say like, yeah, it, it's something that I can understand and I should be able to put it in words and write it there. Actually, I'd like to add. Yeah, actually, um, now that you mentioned it, um, I think it really depends on which, which area of programming that you're working on. Because, uh, for example, a, a, a language like CSS, um, uh, where you, you style your, your HTML, I don't think that's very mathematical at all. Like, it's not, not, very, not very logical language if you have experience in it. So, so it really depends on which um, stack of the technology you're working with. Okay, I think in you talk a little bit about the industry, how it's, it's you know, don't care what time you show up as long as things are done. So I know that you have experiences working in India and also Singapore and Audrey, you know, Silicon Valley and also Singapore. So could you share with the audience on how is it like in these different countries? Is there like, is, is there sexism or is there diversity in different countries and, and what do you observe? Can you go first? Yeah. Well, um, Well, um, my my experience may may be. I mean, I might not be able to, to make a fair comparison between like Silicon Valley and Singapore company because when I moved over to Silicon Valley, I was still within the same company. So it was a transfer from the Singapore office to the U.S. office. So most of the operations were generally the same, except that you get like more perks over there, like <laughs> free lunch. <laughs> um, and, um, but I, I, I do hear of people, like my, my friends, my female friends who have had overt sexism, um, sexist remarks made to them, um, very, um, like a lot of harassment online and offline. Um, I, I, I was fortunate, I, I didn't get any of that sexism, um, like overt sexism um, within my company or outside of my company. In fact, the community that I hang out with, and mostly the, the gold community in the US, they're all like pretty, all pretty civil, pretty nice. So, um, yeah. Um, I think my experience was quite different in the sense that um, I guess I'm, we are really fortunate back in India that basically I would say pretty much 50% of the early career stages, 50% of the employed force is women. So we actually, like I never felt this was a problem until I came out of India to see the rest of the world that people are not actually even encouraged to get into this career think, saying you you don't do well in maths or science because we never had that issue back then. Like 50% would graduate from engineering, 50% would join the workforce, but we only had a problem of retaining amazing women in the pipeline going up in the career path because they would drop off at some point. Um, so looking at that and then coming here, I would really encourage you girls to say that there's really nothing stopping you from doing what I did back home or the rest of the women do here because it's something that's totally um, equal opportunities are available and there's like no physical barrier. It's not a physically stressful job and you you are, there's absolutely no disadvantage that we have in this job because we're just going to be creative and we're going to be thinking. So I think um, I had an amazing experience from where I came from and I think Singapore should also have that soon, like pretty soon we should be able to see a lot more people. Into it. Awesome. At this point in time, I'll take another break in a panel discussion. Does anyone have any questions for these ladies? No one? Any questions?
Okay, then my last question then. So, you know, this audience is a group of people who are really looking to learn programming or are interested to learn. What is one advice that you would give it to them? <laughs> well, I can only share my experience. Um, the, the, thing, the thing that keeps me going is that I love programming. And so um, that, that keeps me going. It's a tough industry, especially if you come, if you're so new and you don't have a CS background, you, don't have, you didn't start programming when you were 10 years old. Um, so, I mean, just, just find whatever help you can get. Um, you have like the benefit of this program. You, um, you know, I'll get to know your mentors, uh, get to know people within the, the community. There are lots of meetup groups uh, that you can attend. If you're interested in, in like, Ruby, go and attend Ruby groups. Get to hear about what people are talking about uh, Ruby. Get to, to meet the Rubyists. Um, there's like there's like a meetup for Python. So yeah, get to know all these people who have experience and uh, learn from them. Um, I mean, I wouldn't call this advice per se, but uh, like imagine a time when there was no programming and you had to do all the tasks or you had to like manually do all the tasks, fill oh, exceptions. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like just go back five years and think of yourself doing all of those and think of yourself doing them in your day-to-day -day jobs. Can you imagine what a drastic change this has made? And this is not superpower. It is like normal human being who've done, who's done all these stuff. So I would uh, definitely like try to think for a moment, what if I, I could make this change for the next person? Or today it's so easy to be able to impact so many people in this world, like to make a great app or make a website. Uh, it could be like for an NGO, it could be for yourself, it could be a timer app, it could be anything. And it costs nothing and it just really impacts your life, makes your life easy, automates things that you hate to do basically, like copying and pasting from an Excel sheet. So that's basically uh, the whole motive of this. And it also ends up connecting all of us into a one global village. So I would say anytime you feel frustrated, like, hey, this is really difficult for me, just take, take a pause and see how much this has changed your life, changed everybody's life around you, and you just need to take that one extra mile of effort, and you would be the next person changing the world for the next generation. Awesome. Thank you, Nitya. It's such a great ending to this kind of Thank you so much. Yes, so this is all the time that we have. So they will still be hanging out. Um, if you'd like to talk to them, just ask them questions. Thank you so Thank much. You so much.